All right, so welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about how we can kind of monitor the player's position. Right now if we hit play and I move my ship around, it can go off the screen left and right. It can go off the screen and up and down. This is going to be a really short one. So if I just move over here, you can see it kind of goes off the screen. Over here, up here, down here, goes off the screen. We want it not to do that. So we're going to go into our player movement script, which I still have up from last time. And we're going to be working in our update method today. So we have our if statement that's checking if we click the mouse button or touch the screen. Uh, we have our if statement that checks if we let go of the mouse button or let go of the screen. We have something that moves the player. Then what I want to do from here is create a clamp on the player's X and Y position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new float, which I'm going to call X position. And that's equal to, um, I'm going to clamp it. And so the method I'm going to use is mathf.clamp. And if you can see here in the tooltip, uh, the value you want to clamp, the minimum value you want it to be, and the maximum value. So what I want to clamp is the ships transform.x. If I look back in Unity here, I'm just going to zoom into my scene view. Make this kind of go down. Uh, if I look back into Unity, the camera is placed at 0, 0, which is right there. Uh, this is negative x, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 is a little bit off screen. Positive 3 is a little bit off screen. And then for y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then negative 5 in the other direction. So I want to limit it at, uh, let's say, negative 2.5, positive 2.5, and let's say 5 and negative 5. So for my x, I'm going to limit it to negative 2.5 is the minimum, and positive 2.5 is the maximum. And I have to make sure to use those f's, because otherwise, since there's a decimal, unity is going to think it's a double. Also, it needs to be transform.position.x. There we go. Cool. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the y. So again, if you triple click a line, you highlight the whole line. Copy it and paste it down here. My y position this time. And this is going to be transform.position.y. And I want to limit this to negative 5f and positive 5f. Then, once I have those clamped, this doesn't actually do anything to the ship's position yet. I have to make sure that the ship is set to this x position and y position. So I'm going to say transform.position is equal to a new, and positions are vector 3s, so vector 3. And I want it to be the x position, the y position, and the z position, since this is a 2D game, is 0. And I'll save that. Jump back into Unity here. Oh, let's hit Compiles. <laughs> You probably don't like my sound effects. Okay, so I'm going to hit play. I'm going to make my window a little bit bigger too so that it's something I can actually see what's going on. And we should be able to be stopped, and then be stopped, and be stopped. So we're limited to our game view. So we're going to make this game so that everything is moving around the ship. And the ship is really kind of staying in one place, but we're going to make it so it looks like the ship is actually moving. We're going to make some pixel effects for the, I don't know, the engines here. Um, we're going to make some shooting effects. So the next thing we're going to do is probably make this thing shoot. So we will get to that very soon. Uh, I hope this finds you well. Oh yeah, I wanted to change this to two. There's something else I forgot to do as well. So if you notice here in Visual Studio, in my script for player movement, in my global variables, this is going to be a mess if I have to add too much more to it. So there's a way that I can make this look neater. If I go up to the top of my list of variables here, I'm going to use a square bracket and write a header, and then in parentheses and quotation marks, 
I'm going to call this player movement stuff. And then what this is going to do, so it's square brackets for header, parentheses, and then whatever name you want to give it, you have to put in quotations. So I'm going to save this. And if I go back to Unity now, this is going to be a little bit more organized because instead of just kind of being floating out here, it's going to tell me what these are actually for as soon as it's done compiling. Oh, maybe. Huh. Okay. 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 Here's what the problem was. It needs to be in front of public stuff. So I'm going to take this header. I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to go in front of my public variables. And I'm going to paste it. And save this. So the header attribute can only be used with public variables. So I had all these privates coming right after it. Um, it didn't actually catch it. So I'm going to take all of these private variables, cut them, and paste them. Now if I had other things I had to add, I would do a little bit of space here and then do another header so that it would be a little cleaner. But I guess I didn't realize that header had to come only before public variables before. That is interesting. If I go back to Unity now, it's going to think and we should be able to see our code a little, or not our code, our inspector, a little bit more organized. Oh, I called it health settings for some reason. We're going to call this movement settings. There we go. So if we save this, let's jump back into Unity, it's going to think, and then that way we could have like another set of things that we might need to do right underneath this, another set of things after under that, and so on and so forth. So I hope this video finds you well, and have a wonderful day.